Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victor expressed to Michael his hope that Victoria would be able to take custody of Claire. Michael questioned Victor's ability to predict Jordan's reaction to the bait. Michael was informed by Victor that Jordan's sole motivation for considering revenge was her conviction that Nikki and Victor were accountable for the demise of Jordan's sister, Eve Howard. Jordan might be keeping quiet, Michael speculated, happy that she avoided a life sentence. Michael was reminded by Victor that Jordan had set a prison on fire to get to Nikki. She will stop at nothing, unless we force her to stop, Victor proclaimed. Victor clarified that the idea was to give Jordan the impression that she was in control while he acted weak. Michael continued to wonder why Claire had to be the one to give the message. Victor restated Claire's willingness to assist and her belief that doing so would fortify her. Michael said he would give a few calls. He told Victor he could deal with the words in Claire's court judgment since they were sufficiently ambiguous. Admiring Michael's legal acumen, Victor referred to him as a smart cookie. Michael was met with Victor's words, I know you'll do the right thing. When Victoria and Cole got to Claire's hospital room, they saw her and tiny Nadia playing gin rummy. After Nadia prevailed in the game, a nurse led her outside. Claire admitted to her parents that although though Nadia and her problems had different origins, she understood Nadia's sentiments of fear and insecurity. Cole complimented Claire's compassion and wisdom. Claire was described by him as a positive influence on that little girl. Claire believed that Nadia had had a more beneficial impact on her. Experiencing things through Nadia's eyes was rejuvenating, Claire informed her parents. Claire described how her Aunt Jordan had prevented her from ever playing with other children and had done all in her power to make Claire feel inferior, even going so far as to cheat at games. Victoria felt repulsed. I detest that female. She was really mean. That kind of mental abuse shouldn't happen to any child, Victoria stated. Claire answered, I understand that now. Spending time with Nadia allows me to be on the other side and simply let her be a child, even if I didn't experience it. There aren't any depressing lessons. Just for pleasure. Claire believed that she had turned a corner in her healing process thanks to her individual and group therapy as well as her meetings with the children. Claire conveyed to Victoria and Cole that the physicians shared her sentiments. That made Victoria delighted to hear. Claire was assured by Victoria and Cole that they were proud of her. Michael texted Cole and Victoria simultaneously, requesting a meeting, which cut off their chat. Michael and Victoria had a meeting at Society. They informed Michael that it was not possible because they knew about Victor's scheme to entice Jordan with Claire. Cole was interested to know why Victor had gone to Michael for help. Michael disclosed that Victor required legal assistance in order to have Claire discharged from the hospital. You can't be on board with this, can you? Victoria questioned Michael. Michael asked Cole and Victoria what they thought of Claire's development. They informed Michelle that although Claire was doing well, things were still quite new and brittle. They believed Claire wasn't ready to be let go particularly if getting in touch with Jordan may result in a problem. Victoria was astounded that Victor would carry out his plan behind her back. Victor paid Claire a visit. He informed her that Nikki's life had been saved and the family owed her an apology. Claire adamantly maintained that she was the one with the debt. Claire said that until Jordan gave her a call, she was unable to deliver a message. Victor clarified, that's why I'd like Michael Baldwin to arrange for your early release. Victor was informed by Claire that she felt secure at the hospital. Victor reassured her that she will always be safe and secure. Claire questioned how an early release would be feasible at all. Victor grinned. Leave it to me, he commanded. Claire calculated Victor's strategy, if Newman's kindness resulted in Claire's release, Jordan would be compelled to act and make a call. Victor was questioned by Claire, do I really have a say in this? What if I told you that I wasn't quite ready to go yet? Victor answered, then, I wouldn't insist on it. According to Victor, there was no other way to stop Jordan. Claire concurred that stopping Jordan was necessary. 
Victoria and the entire family valued Claire's recuperation, so Victor reassured Claire that he wouldn't push for an early release. And to me, Victor continued. I'm grateful. Claire agreed that it was significant, but she still needed more time to consider. It's a great feeling to have another granddaughter, Victor concurred. Greetings from the family. He advised Claire to get in touch with Michael if she made the decision to request her release. Victor went back to his house. Victoria was there, ready for him. She questioned her father about how he was able to talk to Michael about his plan behind her back. Victoria was informed by Victor that he was taking every precaution to keep his family safe. Victor retorted with worries over Nikki's precarious condition as Victoria voiced her worries about the plan's impact on Claire's recuperation. Victor insisted he would protect Claire. Victoria remained unwavering. If you care so much about her health, then why are you trying to move her away from the doctors that are giving her all the help that she needs? Victor swore he would protect his granddaughter. Claire summoned a nurse to her quarters. I would like to make a phone call to my attorney, Michael Baldwin, said Claire, grinning. In the heart of Pinecrest, amidst the swirling currents of intrigue and ambition, Victor remained resolute in his determination to proceed with his plan. With a calculated precision and unwavering resolve, he forged ahead, guided by a singular vision of success. As he meticulously laid the groundwork for his scheme, Victor spared no expense in ensuring its success. Every detail was carefully considered, every contingency accounted for, as he navigated the intricate web of alliances and rivalries that defined life in Pinecrest. With each step forward, Victor's confidence grew, bolstered by the knowledge that victory was within his grasp. Despite the obstacles that lay in his path, he remained undeterred, drawing strength from the unwavering belief in his own abilities. Yet, beneath the facade of confidence, Victor grappled with doubts and uncertainties that threatened to undermine his resolve. The weight of his ambitions pressed heavily upon him, and the consequences of failure loomed ever larger in his mind. But as the moment of reckoning drew near, Victor pushed aside his doubts and fears, steeling himself for the challenges that lay ahead. With a steely determination burning bright within him, he pressed forward, ready to seize the opportunity that lay before him with both hands. And as the pieces of his plan fell into place, Victor knew that the time for action had come. With a sense of purpose driving him forward, he moved with a quiet confidence, knowing that the success of his scheme hinged upon his ability to remain steadfast in the face of adversity. With each passing moment, the stakes grew higher, and the pressure mounted, but Victor refused to falter. Armed with unwavering determination and a strategic mind honed by years of experience, he pressed forward, ready to claim victory at any cost. As the final pieces of his plan fell into place, Victor stood on the precipice of greatness, poised to reshape the destiny of Pinecrest in his image. And though the road ahead was fraught with uncertainty, he knew that with courage, cunning, and a steadfast determination to succeed, nothing could stand in his way.